Thanks for watching. Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh business broker here with more educational content for business owners. Previously on Ask an Intermediary, I answer the question, business valuations versus business appraisal. What's the difference? Today, I want to peel the onion. I want to go a little bit farther and I want to actually put together a presentation and I want to walk you through. There's business owners out there that are thinking about selling their business or they need a valuation, but they don't know what kind. I get this question all the time. Even if they're not selling a business, they've heard they need a valuation for all, lots of different reasons. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time explaining the difference. By the end of this presentation, you should know exactly if you're thinking about evaluation, if you need an opinion of value, broker's opinion of value, or an appraisal or something else. Does that sound good? Should we get started? Let's do it. All right. Well, I will start with a presentation. Let me share this screen here. And I'll throw this up on the screen. Business valuations versus appraisals. This is our topic du jour of the day. What's the difference? I'll give you a high level, and then I'm going to going to dig down a little bit more into each of them. In general, business valuations, first of all, an appraisal is a valuation, but a generic valuation tends to be more affordable than an appraisal. There's a, Typically, there's a faster turnaround. I say they're non-contested, that they're best for non-contested, and they're really good for business planning. There may not be a specific objective needed for the valuation. You're just looking forward to the future. You want to know at one point of time. Uh, and if you want to sell a business, it's it's a great tool, obviously. So business planning. Appraisals, on the other hand, tend to take more time. They tend to be more expensive. They're always done with a certified, somebody who has a certification in, in doing appraisals. And they're great for contested matters. They can they can be good for non-contested matters. But in general, we we recommend that we do valuations in in-house and with a third party, but we recommend appraisals for people who, where there's contested. And, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Big picture, that's all you need to know. You can log off right now if that's what you wanted to learn, but I hope you'll stick with me because I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Valuations, the umbrella term, let's define it. It's an indication of value. It's a price point or a range. Could be for a business, could be for real estate, could be for anything, right? So we're talking big picture here, but the same way that, that's a broad term could be informal, could be um, formal, could be official. And the form, I would consider an appraisal an official valuation, but towards the end, I'll tell you, I'll put a, a disclaimer on that as well. Could be anything from a back of the napkin. We, we do these all over the phone, um, probably a great disservice to some of our clients in some cases, we're careful there, but a back, back of the napkin can be a valuation, but it could range all the way to something that this stands the test of of a court of law, and it could be very. That's when I say it's official. What are you using it for, right? The the needs are going to be different for every business owner. And lastly, who can create it? Some can be created by anyone. Some you definitely need a a, a certification in order to to put your stamp on that. So big picture, that's a little bit about valuations. Let's start with. Opinion. So we're going on this spectrum, right? Opinions of value. An opinion of value is not an appraisal. It is just that it's someone's opinion. That that person could be a broker, could be a valuation specialist, and it it's going to give go over the calculations. It's going to be pulled from the owner's source data. I, I consider myself a valuation specialist and a business broker. I, I can't value a business without knowing the numbers. Uh, we use the client's numbers, but we also ask for tax returns and other other data. We know that the owner has submitted their business financials to the government. And so we we and banks put a higher degree of fidelity in tax returns. And they don't always match the financial statements, but it's based on source data as well as, as Q&A with the owner. And it's compared against sold businesses. So there's a, you can go on Zillow and see what, what the for sale price is, but we only use for not for sale, but sold comparables to see what similar businesses have sold for. I say we is speaking as valuation uh, specialists in general. And typically these are great for, for options for exit, but they can be used for different things. A broker's opinion of value is just that. It's an opinion of value from a business broker. 
Now, you don't have to have credentials to do a BOV. And a BOV, broker's opinion of value, is analogous in the real estate world to a CMA, comparative market analysis. If, if you have a residential real estate, they say, I'm going to do a CMA. A BOV is similar to that. Whereas a CMA says, hey, every house in the block is sold for a half million. We think we can get you a half million. Business broker will say, every business that makes this kind of money is sold for a half million. So we think we can get you a half million. It gets take, I'm so super simplifying. It takes a lot to get to that stage. But these are this is uh, kind of what BOVs and, and CMAs are. But the credentials, where that data is coming from, how it's analyzed, how it's broken down, there's a lot of different ways to go that with that. Now, anybody can be a business broker in some states. Other states, there's more regulation. Uh, there's two states that require a business broker's license, and there's 17 or 18 today that tie the real estate to the business brokerage license. But most states, anybody can be a business broker. So if you're going to get a BOV from a business broker, look into their credentials as a broker, not credentials to value, but credentials as a broker. Ask if they, you know, how many deals they've done and and just their experience there. That's something to think about if you're uh, deciding to, to have someone do evaluation. And then cost-wise, some brokers give them away for free. Some brokers charge and then credit that towards a success fee. And some, some brokers treat them as a standalone valuation. And, and it is what it is. It's you're, you're buying a service or a product there. That's a little bit about the price point on the, on the BOVs. Now let's let's shift over to appraisal. So going down this spectrum, I mentioned we do valuations in our office. I should I should finish up the valuation talk by saying that that in our office we do BOVs, but we also bring in a valuation specialist and we do non BOVs. We do opinions of value with someone who doesn't sell businesses just to take out that that perception that we are valuation is skewed because we want to sell the business. So we, we do call those opinions of values. But what are the valuation specialists that we bring in is not an appraiser. What, what When is an appraisal needed? Well, on your screen, I think you can see some of the reasons that we, we will always do refer out appraisal services. Number one, if someone calls in and they say, me and my business partner are going to sue each other and they're wrong and I'm right, we typically don't touch that. Contested Valuations typically are not a good fit for a traditional valuation. Probably need appraisal. Probably need um, something that has a signature from someone with credentials. I'll show you what those credentials are momentarily. Because it could go to court. There's something called a use PAP certified. This, if a judge looks at an appraisal, they'll ask, "Is this a certified appraisal?" Opinions of value are not certified. So if it's contested, if it may go to court. If a bank is going to look at it, right? then we do recommend an appraisal. And um, you know, if there's a threat of litigation, it's just, it's just not a good fit for an opinion of value. They're more for business planning. And I say when money's not an issue, money is always an issue in life, correct? However, appraisals do cost more. It's just a fact. And the if, if an owner says, I just want a really good idea of, of the value of this business, I want more than a an opinion, I want an appraisal. I don't care what it costs. That's another scenario where an appraisal may be a good fit. A little bit more, I mentioned there there are credentialing bodies. The, the SBA does Small Business Administration. They guarantee loans. This is the equivalent of Freddie and Fannie Mac in real estate. This is for businesses. For businesses uh, up to $7 million. Their qualifications for an appraisal they want a business valuation to appraisal. They will they will cite these five bodies as deemed acceptable for their appraisals, and they are the ASA, the CBA, the ABB, the CVA, and the the BCA. And I I've actually studied some of these. I can tell you the the methodologies that they use are 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 not that different than what we do, but they certainly consider different different aspects and different avenues to get to their price point or their range. And the interesting thing is that the different flavors, I see CPAs getting the CVA. I see business uh, business people, business brokers and business analysts getting the BCA. So each professional tends to arrive at, at one of these flavors of a certification, depending on what track they come on. But they all go to the same place. Someone has a certification to do an appraisal. Appraisals are signed 
and then we'll reference this certification um, on the title page or on the signature page. I mentioned also that you don't even need this if it's less than a half million banks won't, won't require that. Oh, and here's my final note. If it's an appraisal, if it's an opinion of value, a broker's opinion of value, they're all subjective. Two appraisers could give you different numbers. At any stage when we go through this exercise, I say we as a valuation person, but an appraisal professional will tell you the same thing. There will be a point in the valuation or multiple points where someone's got to make a decision. We have to take the data that's given to us and we have to apply it. And there's often multiple ways we can apply it. We have to make a decision. That's why I say it's subjective. Business owners, if you get a valuation, an appraisal that you don't like, please know that you don't have to sell your business or, or agree to that price. But that is one person's opinion or one person's arrival at that number based on their research of the value of a business. Ultimately, the market will dictate what the business will sell for, what the business is valued at. Most, a lot of valuations are internal sales or this, these dealing with contested matters. The only real way to know what a business will sell for is to take the market and see, see what the market responds to. But there's a lot of subjectivity with valuations and appraisals. So I like to make that point. Um, it, it really comes down to the best fit for the owner. Well, that's all I have for you on appraisals and valuations. I hope this deeper dive was useful. I'm all over the web. Uh, VR Biz Triangle is where a lot of my handles are. You're, you're probably watching this on YouTube. Check out my other YouTube videos. Like, subscribe, share. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. It means a lot that you spent the time with me today to learn something new. I'd love to learn what else you want to hear about. So comment in, in below. Or if you have a specific question, everything we do is confidential. So if you have a specific question about your business, about valuation appraisals, shoot me a direct message. I'll look for that. Um, and we'll treat that as confidential. That's all I got for you today. This is Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh Business Broker, signing off.